Today in Baldur's Gate 3, I'll be walking you through the Ruined Chapel and Crypt Dungeon. I'll show you the variety of ways you can disarm the trap, how to get the unique spear weapon without your whole party dying, an incredible amulet that lets you speak with the dead, which is honestly one of the most unique and useful spells in the game, because there's a lot of secret dialogue from speaking to dead people in this game, a soul coin, which will be useful for you later, and a book of dead gods. But most importantly, you'll unlock the camp follower, Withers, who allows you to re respect your class and your stats completely. He'll also do the same thing for origin characters as well and he'll give you the ability to resurrect them for a price of course. So let me start out by showing you where this location is and the different ways you can access it. Now the chapel is actually one of the first dungeons you find in the game. After crash landing on the beach here you can go all the way to the north along the beach and then you'll reach the overgrown ruins just here on the map. You'll find Shadowheart just over here next to this door. And behind her is one of the four entrances to the chapel ruins. This is the first way you can enter the location at the ancient door, which is where you find Shadowheart at the start of the game. Now, in order to get inside this, you have to right click it and then lock pick it. However, and that will take you straight to the trap room, which I will timestamp in the video so you can skip ahead if you want to do it this way. But there is another way we will be getting in. And to do that, we're going to come to the area of the chapel, which is directly above the ancient door just here. To get here, you're going to want to come round from the overgrown ruin fast travel point all the way to the roadside cliffs. And then to the right, you will find the chapel itself. You can see my party is just here. The main entrance is obviously this door at the back here. You can also use this foundation block, which is hanging from a crane, to make a massive hole, which you can actually then jump down into the ruin itself. And the fourth and final entrance, if we come back out to the front here, if you come to the right and go down the side here, these vines, you will find a secret trap door just down here. Now you can lockpick this, but you need a 20, which is very high. The most optimal way for us to go in is with our party from the entrance just here. Obviously we need to deal with these one, two, three, four bandits. And then if I look on the map again, you'll see that off to the left here, if you follow this road all the way around, you can actually get one of your followers to go on the flank if they're a sneaky character. So just up the stairs here to the left, I've got one of my companions standing behind this guy. Now I could push him off and kill him. But starting out, let's go Lyzel to do a ranged attack on this massive concrete rope. We have a 100% chance to hit. And there we go. They are all dead. Now, if we enter turn-based mode, like so, these two characters are running downstairs to check what's happened. So I can get my rogue to come up behind here and do a sneak ranged attack on them, like so. Get Rex son, and then we can end our turn. And she has no idea what's happened. A cheeky fireball will probably help her die. And now we've sorted them all out, so now we can loot the bodies. For some rogue equipment, has some thieves tools and trap disarm kits which we'll need later. Gimbalbok has a shovel which is very important. And now we have a big hole that we can actually jump down. Now from here you're actually going to want to come outside because we picked up that shovel. There's actually a secret just outside here, just to the right, and then you'll see you'll get a survival check. And if you pass the survival check you'll see that there's actually something hidden in this dirt mound. Because we have the shovel, we can right click it and press U. And then we should pull it out and start digging away to reveal a secret chest. What's inside? Some more gold and grease. Loot is random for everyone though, so let's go back into the location itself. Now beyond this hole that I'll be using, the second method of entry is actually to come over to this main door here. And then we can sparse a skill check. Everything all right out there? We can do a performance check. Yes, it's me. Let me in. And there'll be one enemy on the other side of the door. Or we can deceive him. Gimbalbok triggered some trap. He needs help now. Now, obviously, if you don't have a high speech... Wow. I'm actually wearing a t-shirt right now. Which embodies the feeling of every time you roll a natural one in D&D. Guess I'll die. If you guys want that merch, I'll link it down below in the description. So yeah, we failed there, but don't worry. We can get into this place with another method. So how we're going to do this is enter turn-based mode on the bottom right here. And then we're going to click to go into this building. Once you get inside, you'll hear the NPCs searching because they heard a loud noise. 
and they will check this door. So we're going to get our strongest companion and tell them to walk over to this door and throw something in front of it like this. We can also bless our team as well. And then we're going to walk over, over to the door and we're going to open enough. it like this. And outside you'll see this oil barrel. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot this like so. That oil is going to explode over everyone. And then I'm going to get my wizard firebolt cantrip like so. And boom! That's a lot of damage. And we started combat in probably the most effective way possible. Because they're all surprised, we now get to attack them again. So I'm going to come around to the edge here and see, I can see this guy who has 17 health. He's like the biggest threat. So we're going to shoot Try him. Me. And then we're going to move out of the way so the next person can attack. He's trying to get through. As you can see, he can't actually get to us because of this barrier box we've placed in front of him. But they are shooting through the door to try and hit us still. What we can do, though, is push him back onto the fire. Now, I can also yes, cast course. Grease here, which is also flammable, but another explosion of damage. And we've successfully killed those enemies. Now, in this bedroom, you'll find lots of stacks of books, which have books that you can actually sell for money. So I'd recommend just taking them all and selling them to merchants. There's also a wardrobe with some clothes. And now we can go outside into the corridor and just go ahead and loot everyone that we kill. It's pretty much just your typical bandits loot and a few thieves tools that we can use too. There's also some thieves tools by this door here as well. Now back behind you, you'll find another door which you can open with this lever just here. And inside this room, you will find another enemy. He's still standing guard. This was the guy we spoke to earlier. We've just got to sneak around him like this because he's staring intently at the door. And then we can just shoot him from the side. And he is ooh, almost dead, but not quite. He's still surprised though, so I get another shot at him for free. And that finishes him off there. He actually has the bandit's key for the front door as well. And I would recommend if you've lost health that you can go ahead and take a short rest or a long rest anytime you want just to heal your party. More books and also a table with a looter's trunk, which has some bandit treasure. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to head back into the room we just came out of and we're going to walk all the way across. You will see there is a door here that is locked. Lock picking is also impossible. So what we're going to do to open this mysterious door is come into this next room which is a temple. This is where all the bandits were hanging out. Right at the back of this room, you will get a perception check. Hmm. And we've passed. What's that? So we found this lever. Pull this lever, and it's going to open that door in the other room. There's also a bunch of treasure here as well. So now after you've looted that and uh, got the button pressed, you can come back to this door. And as you can see, it is now open. Now, if you do approaching from the other side, so you did the dungeon the other way around, which is possible, if you lockpick that first door with Shadowheart, what you have to do is you have to light these candles in order for the door to open like that. Just make sure these two candles either side are lit and then the door will magically open. But for now, let's proceed into the next room. Here we are in the dank This place crypt. wasn't built for the night. Ah, an amethyst ring. The first thing of value I feel like I've picked up on this adventure, along with some gold. And there's another chest just across the room here. We will go ahead and loot. Now, we have a big oak door just here, which we can lockpick. However, before we do that, we're going to go into the room behind us, where there is another door, which we can just open. So, we've got a perception check here, and we have found a vent. But before we talk about that, this is the room where if you unlock the ancient door on the other side that I showed you earlier in the video, you will come out in this trap room. And obviously, if you've been following the video along, you can come in from this side too. But there is some awesome treasure inside this room. But first, we need to disarm the trap so we don't all die from it. So what I'm going to do is walk around the room and we're going to find various vents from all of these perception checks just, just here. Now, don't worry if your characters fail the perception checks because I'll be showing you where all of these vents are and how to close them in a moment. But for the sakes of this video, we've actually passed them. So you can see there's lots of vents around this room. And when you spring the trap, they will release oil. And that oil will then be set alight by this trap over here. Best avoid that trap. 
which you can see these are gargoyle heads that actually release fire they all shoot fire balls across the room and then the gas explodes and it keeps filling up and keeps exploding to all gone this is a clip of what that looks like so if you right click you have an option to disarm but it's not worth your time instead it's actually better just to physically That's disarm the trap so what we're going to do is we're going to get all our followers on the other side of the room and then we're going to get one character, these containers, this vase here, and we're just going to move it onto the pressure plates, like so. Now, if it's on the pressure plate, it disarms it. And just so you guys know, jugs do not work. So you're going to want to move jugs and use vases, which are a lot bigger and heavier. Right in the middle of the circle is the first one. The other ones are behind the pillars in the middle square section on either side of the room. And then the last one is just here. Now, if you fail the perception check, that's exactly where the locations are. So we are now safe. We can go ahead and loot the rest of the Let's room, look. including the unique weapon that exists here. So there's a ruby ring. Nice. If you also hold down the alt key, you can see all the lootable stuff apart from containers which you have to walk over to. We have a mule and some skeleton bones. And there's a soul coin, which is a very useful item. I don't want to spoil what this is if you don't know. And also some heavy armor. So now we're going to come back to the center of the room. And we can now open this sarcophagi. As soon as we open the sarcophagus, the gargoyle heads are going to start spouting fire. So what we can do is press this button to stop it. But first, we need to enter turn-based mode. We need to click open on the sarcophagus. So now we can loot it for the Watcher's Guide Spear, which gives you true strike if you miss an attack roll with it. The spear can also be equipped one-handed as well. And also the engraved key for the next room. So let's loot that. And now we're going to click this button just here. And that's going to disarm the trap. Exit turn-based mode, like so. And now no fire is actually going to trigger on our character. But if you didn't pass the percept to see the button, this is what you do. Now, one thing we can do instead of disarming this sarcophagi is enter turn-based mode. Then we can right-click to open it and take that. Now, we're still in turn-based mode, so obviously we're going to want to leave and Very run well. all the way over here. If you can't run far enough, you can use your dash ability to make sure you're completely out of range. And then we can exit turn-based mode, and you guys should see all the fire is now going to appear and just start destroying everything. So we're now safe from that. We can just carry on to the next room. And now we can use that key we got to open the heavy oak doors just here. So let's press open. And we can unlock it now with the engraved key that we just used up. And now we enter a very mysterious area, kind of like an old Arms sort of temple most... with a bunch of dead scribes on the floor. We can go ahead and loot them all before the heavy key that this one has on its body is actually going to open the door from the trap room called the ancient door in the other room. So we're going to take that and there's What's also a here? hidden gilded chest at the back. And just back here, there's actually another door to another room. And just at the back here in this room, you're going to find the book of the now dead dog. The screen. Now you can lockpick this book to open it. There's also a heavy chest here you can loot. And now if we come down to the altar itself and then go to the left of it, you will find a hidden button just here on the left. And as soon as we press this button, a bunch of undead will spawn. So one thing you can actually do is get your like melee companions done. to go and Objective stand next to them. And then get no. your other follower to open the door just here. And a secret passage reveals itself. All of the undead have been healed and come back to attack you. Lazelle's already ready to delete this scribe. Oh, wow, she missed. Okay. And attack again. Get wrecked. Can take out this undead right here. Now, all the scribes are going to be using spells because we actually stole their weapons when we looted their bodies. And now we can take out this last scribe here, and then we have won the battle. Now we can actually go inside the crypt itself. What lays within? Well, firstly, we have a, a chest one sarcophagus. with a unique item called Amulet of Lost Voices, which allows us to speak with the dead spell, and is extremely useful in this game. Use it at every opportunity because the lore and dialogue it gives you is incredible. And we can go ahead and open it. He might look rather creepy, but he's actually a very useful companion. The character's name is Withers, and he's going to allow us to respec our class, including origin characters' classes. And he'll also resurrect our followers when they die. So now we can head out of this giant gaping hole in the side of his tomb. And we'll see the daylight to our left. And on the right here, if you come round the other side, you will find a lever and a ladder. So if you go ahead and pull the lever probably guess where this takes us 
take the iron ladder back up to the top. And as you can see, we've reached the chapel entrance. There's a skeleton here to loot. Now, as soon as we go back to our campsite, if you actually go back to the beach, you'll see this character has now appeared in our camp and you can talk to him. Now, when you talk to him with an origin character, you'll see an option that says, can you help me change my class for 100 gold? As you can see, it will then take you back to character creation. Lizelle is a fighter in her origin story, but I can change her into a ranger, druid, cleric, paladin. I can change her subclass. I can also, which is probably the most useful thing, I can change all of her stats so they're optimal for the build I want. However, I would actually recommend you, like for the first play for at least, leave your origin characters on their classes because the origin characters have origin stories and backgrounds and some of their stories are revolving around the different class types they have they have specific dialogue options and conversations for those classes so you will miss out on that unique dialogue if you change their backstory it kind of just ruins the character if you do that so i recommend not doing it however what you can do is change their abilities if you really want to min-max these characters and still be a bit more efficient. Especially with Shadowheart, that can be a good idea. Now, if one of your companions dies in battle, you can also come and talk to him and he will give you the option to resurrect them for 200 gold. So death is not permanent in this game and nor are classes and anything else. The only thing you can't change on an origin character is their race. That is fixed. Same with your character class. You can change and respec everything. The race is permanent, however. You can check out my other location guides linked down below in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.